Now let's start breaking up our own code into AMD modules. By the single responsibility principle, we should create divisions in our code based on common responsibilities. So let's take a chunk of our JavaScript that has a common responsibility and turn it into an AMD module. The most obvious one is this set of functions dealing with data access. We'll start by moving this block of code up to the top here. We define a module using the function define. The define function is added to the global JavaScript scope by require.js. The first parameter to define is the name of the module. Every AMD module has a name, which is simply a string. This name is used to identify this module to other modules when they need to include it as a dependency. Let's name this module task data. The second parameter is a list of dependencies that this module needs to have available to it. Dependencies are listed as an array of module names as strings. The third parameter is a callback function. This function is called with all of our dependencies after they've been loaded. Right now we're defining all of our modules in this single file still for simplicity, but later on in the course we'll talk about loading these modules from separate files. For now just remember that module loading is asynchronous, and that's why we're using a callback function. The callback function can just be an anonymous inline function as done here, but it should have the same number of parameters as there were dependencies. In other words, any dependencies listed in the dependency array will be passed to the function, and the parameters should line up. We will see an example of this soon, but since the module has no dependencies, we can just use a function with no parameters. Now, if you're like me, then you're a fan of the strict mode in JavaScript. If you don't know what this means, I encourage you to do a search on it and check it out. Let's just say you should probably be using it. One way to enable strict mode is to include the string, use strict, as the first line of a function. Module callbacks are functions, so we can simply put this as the first line in any of our modules. Then we can paste in all the code that we cut before, all the functions that deal with our task data loading, into this define function. Finally, we need to return an object out of the define function. The object that is returned from the define function is what is passed in to other modules when they depend on this module. In other words, when a later module depends on the task data module, it'll get this object that we're defining here as the return value. Here's the syntax for the define function that we just used. Note that this syntax is used when we define modules in line with other code. That's what we're doing right now with the sample project, but later on we'll be moving these modules off to separate files, which will have a slightly different syntax. Now we have our task data module defined. If we tried to run this code right now, we'd get a few JavaScript errors. And that's because these three functions for loading, saving, and clearing data are no longer accessible where they were being called before, since they're no longer defined in global scope. We need to tell require.js that the rest of the code down in the require function is now dependent on the task data module. Just like we did with jQuery, we can add task data to both the dependency array and to the parameters into the callback function. So what's going to happen here is that when the require function is called and require.js sees that this is dependent upon the task data module, it's going to take the object returned by the task data module and pass it in to the callback function of require. Now anywhere that those task data functions were called, we need to call them off of the task data module object. So for example, here save task data was being called. We now need to call task data dot save task data. Now to me the call Task data dot save task data seems a little repetitive. So let's change this to just task data dot save. That means we also need to change our return object up in the module to match. And we'll go ahead and do the same for the load task data and clear task data functions. <laughs> 
Since we've now created our first AMD module, this is another good place to stop and make sure the application still works in the browser. So we can still create tasks, still delete a task, still clear our tasks, and there's no error messages in the console. So everything's looking good.